This is a, an interesting and unfortunate international incident. She was apparently kidnapped in March from the Karada neighborhood of Baghdad. She was doing research for her doctoral thesis. She had been to Iraq many times, so she likely knew her way around Iraq, but she was likely also targeted because of her, uh, it, because she's an Israeli national. And she's a dual national, apparently, uh, both an Israeli national and a Russian national. So that causes an interesting situation. Both countries have an obligation to try to rescue her and get her back. She was apparently taken by a Shia, uh, Iran-backed Shia militia in Iraq. And the, there are a number of militias in Iraq. They've uh, grown a lot over the last few years. They've been legalized in Iraq, but they're not really part of the military. And, 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 and some are harder to control than others. The ones that are backed by Iran uh, tend to act independently. This one was backed by Iran. It's affiliated with Hezbollah. So it's we don't know whether anyone will have any influence with them, but likely Russia has some influence with them, given that Russia is a strong partner and ally with Iran. And so Russia might be able to rescue her if that's what they want to do. But there hasn't been any success yet. Uh, as I mentioned, she's been kidnapped since March, although this has just come to light and been made public. Yeah, just just learning now here in July. So I just want to recap for people because it really is a lot to, to wrap our minds around. So she has a dual citizenship uh, between Isra Israel and Russia. She was captured in Iraq by a group with ties to Iran. So with all of that being said, last year, Iraq's parliament passed this law which criminalizes any attempt to normalize ties with Israel. So we have all of these countries potentially involved. How likely is there to be any sort of compromise or agreement? Look, it's it's interesting that you note that the law that Iraq passed, because, of course, a number of countries in the Middle East are going in the other direction, normalizing relations with Israel, like some of the Gulf Gulf, Gulf countries, for instance, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, but Iraq has gone the other way uh, because of the influence of Iran, likely. As you mentioned, the parliament has passed new laws, uh, making it illegal to deal with Israel. And there's a sentiment in Iraq uh, that's anti-Israel. And so these this might be the reason she was taken. We don't know what demands they have. Are there demands of her family? Are they demands of uh, of the country of Israel? It's it's not clear, but it is certainly likely an Iran-backed militia in Iraq, and some would have influence over that militia, especially the Iranian government would likely have influence. The uh, IRGC in Iran would have influence, and Russia may have some influence given the alliance between Russia and Iran. So we, one would hope Russia is engaging here because she is a citizen of Russia. My last question for you, David, what is the best case scenario for her to be returned and returned safely? Well, she could, we, the best case scenario is that she is returned safely. Uh, she's escorted out of Iraq, uh, flown out of the airport in Baghdad. She, uh, there wouldn't be any direct flights between Baghdad and Israel, but she'd fly to a neutral country and then make it back home uh, very quickly or fly to Russia. Uh, perhaps uh, diplomats from some other countries are trying, you know, are, are acting as intermediaries here. The year is the U.S. connection to this, too, of course, because she was studying at Princeton University here in the United States. So the United States is she's not an American. She's not an American citizen. But the U.S. also has an interest in, in seeing her get home safely. Yeah, and a fellow at that, at that think tank based in Washington. So certainly uh, a, a lot to unpack with this one as well. David Tafuri, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.